Africa has tried out diverse leadership models, but experience and research conclusions both establish the stewardship model of leadership as the very best option for meaningful and lasting success. Stewardship simply defined covers the conduct, supervision, management of values entrusted in your care. There are seven basic bulwarks of stewardship that must be mastered to present acceptable service. And I quote, One, a steward has to be faithful, has to be faith-filled, must have discretion, be diplomatic. Number four, needs wisdom and prudence. Five, accountability. Six, diligence. And seven, knowledge. Bulwarks are defensive walls or fortifications that help us to safeguard success. Stewards that operate from these positions of strength tend to succeed rather than fail. Stewards are accountable because there will always be a day of reckoning and stewards tend to become a reflection of their lords who train them. Stewards work with vision rather than sight and wisdom makes the application of knowledge profitable. All in all, success is often a function of the degree of equipment that a steward possesses in the pursuit of vision. In the book of Job chapter 38, we see the scriptures where God says, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? A steward must always value knowledge because God values knowledge. In Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, the Bible says, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Hosea 4 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and because you've rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. You won't be a priest to me seeing that you've forgotten the law of your God and I will also forget your children. Proverbs 8 verse 10 Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 Bible instructs says you must cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. In Second Peter chapter one verse two, we see the how to. Grace and peace can only be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. Second Timothy chapter three verse seven talks about a strategy that leaders must understand here. Now this one is a bit on the reverse side. But in a leadership program, stewards who are going to be efficient leaders must be very careful to discern and to detect this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible talks about a process where people are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, this is the kind of education pattern that the devil arithmetic exploits. It will put you through school. Yet it will limit your ability to think. You will go through school, alright, but your ability to think things through will be hindered. So you have a curriculum that leads you on a merry dance. And that's why often in Africa you can graduate as an engineer and not even be able to fix the most basic of levers. Always learning, never coming to a point of truth that can be applied. You see, at the advanced level, let's get practical, a steward must be able to differentiate between what comes from God and the things that spring from the philosophical tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
If you don't understand the crucial difference, a steward can be drawn into the error of assuming that everything that is good must be God. This presumption has led many into bondages that last for thousands of years. Furthermore, a good steward must appreciate the value of things like the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and things like that. Now let's look at the issue of vision. Stewards must learn and know that sight is common to men, but vision is rare. Sight is a function of your eyes, while vision is a function of your heart. Sight sees things the way they are, while vision sees things, the same things, the way they could become. Sight delivers cold reality, while vision transports you into the future. Sight captures the present, while vision transports you on the wings of imagination to the destination of change. You see, stewardship will stagnate where there is no vision. You need to learn to communicate a vision. The Bible says, a vision, look, a vision is the source and the sustenance of hope for all things in life. Number one, take this. Life will stagnate without visionary motivation. Two, vision injects enthusiasm and ignites endurance. Number three, vision wards off depression, weariness, and exhaustion. Number four, vision provides endurance and inspires courage. You see, what vision does is that it can remove limitations and barriers and it will provide you access into the unseen. Well, we generally offer a much more comprehensive course on the power of vision in the development of Africa. Now you will find that in our package that is designed for the ALF, our African Leadership Focus. You see, stewards appreciate the motivation that visions bring and understand the chaos and unrestrained expressions that will result where there is no guiding vision. Stewards must know what to do with visions, how to articulate visions properly. Sound stewardship recognizes the evil that inordinate and retrogressive visions bring to the table and they know how to discern and discourage good but competitive visions that lead to failure. You see, if you are going to attract provisions to make your vision a reality, there are a special set of skills that you must that must be a part of a steward's repertoire. Clarity of vision is needed for the recruitment exercise and the rendition of a detailed or a phased plan that the recruited persons will follow is non-negotiable. One specialized area of knowledge that must accompany the power of visions in Africa will be the development and the skillful use of narratives in supervision and the transmission of visions into succeeding generations, which begets us one thing. Number one, what is a narrative? Two, how does a narrative work? Three, how different is a narrative from a vision? Four, what makes a narrative effective in crossing from generation to generation? Five, how do you develop a good narrative or narratives for African vision? Six, how do you recognize a counter narrative? You see, visions are definitely more effective when the right narratives have been drawn out. To ensure a successful cross-generational execution of uh, the vision, Stewards have to be mindful of the dynamics of a vision. We're talking about the costs of the vision, the time factor involved. Look, in conclusion, we must remember that stewardship remains the best form of leadership that Africa needs in this hour, lest we make the same mistakes 
that the generations before us have made to commit the continent into motion without progress. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 says, Let a man so account of us. This is the personality of a leader. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, the Bible says, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Luke chapter 12, verse 19 and 20. And I will say to my soul, said the rich man, So, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, be merry. Now, this is the parable of the story of a rich fool. The man who made such a lot of wealth that he said to himself he needed to retire. He was going to take things easy. He was just going to you know, take our time to just enjoy himself from time this time on. Bible says, but God said to him, you are a fool. This night, your soul will be required of you. And then, who shall be those things that you have labored for for so long? Now, what's the Bible teaching us here? Bible is saying that the man was a rich man, but he did not know he was a steward. You cannot be a success. You cannot be a leader if you don't realize that you are a steward. The Bible says, study Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that will not need to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, because they will increase unto more ungodliness. What are we saying? No student can be approved, no steward, no leader can ever make it unless you are studious. So people who are not studious, they say that leaders are leaders. Not all readers are leaders, but definitely all who will lead must learn to read. We have a few assignments that will help you. Um, our session says, we need you to compare and contrast the vision and the supplied narratives of the Emirate of Dubai. Compare that to the narrative and the vision of the United States of America and look back in history and compare that also to Hitler's Nazi Germany, his vision and the narratives that he used.